There was a Royal Rumble <coughs> where you entered second, right? For those of you who don't know the Royal Rumble, uh, uh, you entered second, 30 guys come out, and you, it's basically elimination, process of elimination. You entered second and you won. You beat 27 people. That was incredible. That was like, was that the moment that Rey Mysterio came on the map as a real contender? I think that was the moment that the fans really wanted to see something happen for Rey Mysterio. Mm. And and unfortunate, but it was right after Eddie had just passed. Mm. Eddie passed in November. And shortly after, you know, talking January, Royal Rumble happened. And for some reason, the fans would see Eddie through me. You know, and that was a connection that that I made with the fans during that phase. And it was it was such a cool thing, man, because uh Eddie and I were very, very tight. And I wish you would have had a chance to work with him. You would have enjoyed working I, with him. I I I've heard that so many times. Yeah. I've heard yeah. that so many times. And all I can watch now are like clips of him. Yeah. Um and man, he was I mean, so talented, right? Yeah. And I I don't obviously don't know what he was like behind the scenes, but even a better person. Really? More in the ring. Yeah. One of those, huh? Yeah, one of those guys. Dang, man. Yeah. Really cool. But yeah, that was that was a it was a turning point for me in my career. You know, that's when I got the recognition of of being one of the top dogs in the company and I felt really good. I felt I felt honored and and a lot of pressure that the ball was being handed to me and I had to run with it now. Is that is that the only thing that like changed after Eddie's passing? Like was there anything else that you how did that how did that affect your your entire like thoughts about your career as well as like life in general um because it wasn't an accidental death it was personal something happened with him he had a uh, heart attack you know it, it it doesn't affect you with the perspective of, of oh shit, it might happen to me if something would have happened to him in the ring that's when really things get scary but because it was uh it was a death that was outside of the ring it just, it affected all of us very, very much, man. It was, he was a vibe of the locker room constantly, you know, and then when he was gone, it was like, we felt like something was always missing. And still to this day, even though we have a new generation on board, he was just such a great uh, teacher and such a great person, great heart. Do you wanna hear a wild story? Um, in our match, when I went up to the top rope for the first time and I did the shimmy, the shimmy, yeah. it, that's, that's the Eddie Guerrero. Right. And I think that was the first time I, I just remembered him and, and did this move. And it was the first time I felt the entire crowd react to something I was doing in a way, in a way that just lit everyone up yeah. and then went right into this move. So it's crazy how, you know, I didn't know Eddie and I'm, I've been turned on to his stuff recently, but it's crazy how someone can have that type of impact yeah. years 20, later with someone who did, didn't even like know him like, yeah. at all. And yeah. I, 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 I like channeled, channeled him. Yeah. And to this day, he's still able to have that, that type of effect on 60,000 people yeah, watching. It's insane, man. Um, Eddie, uh, I think what's really cool is that the fans know when you have talent and recognize it. And of course, just like the style of wrestling has changed throughout the years, the evolution, you know, fans change too, you know, and from seeing the bigger guys, you know, doing just power moves. Now they were getting into watching uh, some Lucha style ma um, matches mm. with mass and you name it, you know. So the game was changing overall, WCW, then WWE. When Eddie got that break in WWE, it's like, oh, wow. He just, he captured just an entire fan base off of that and he became the king man yeah nah he's so good <laughs> is there is there anything uh that you still do like now to kind of like continue on his legacy or even anything like behind the scenes like that you that you continue to carry from him like in your life like but i always before i hit the ring i always send out a prayer and i always ask for his protection okay. you know with the lord yeah so it, it's really it's cool to know and and even when when i walk out you know fans still see that attachment after so many years have passed you know i'd never been to his grave until uh 
a couple years, uh, 19, I believe we did uh, Royal Rumble in Phoenix. And that was the first time I went to his grave. And oh my God, it hit. And I just never wanted to go. I wanted to remember him mm. how I remember, how wet he was, you know. But it was it was very uh, heartbreaking, man. And, and the more I think about him, the more I miss him. So I just keep him in my heart mm. constantly and just take life day at a time. I'm sure a lot of people share that sentiment. Yeah. Does it does it make you like proud? I guess last question on it, like to to see how important and impactful his life has been and how it continues to impact the organization as well as the lives of the fans. And knowing that someday, obviously, inevitably, yeah, right. you will have a, a similar impact and a lasting legacy in this world. That's crazy. I never put it that way. But uh, I know that for a fact, Dominic was seven years old when we did the the storyline for the custody of Do of Dominic. You know, that yo. was that, that was crazy. Yo, yo. You remember seeing that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Two thousand five. Uh, would that be allowed in this era? I don't see why not. <laughs> that, that that was insane. These guys were battling for the custody of his child I, in front you, of the world. Yeah. If you've never <laughs> if you've never seen it, check it out. Yeah. But just the story leading into it, that you know. Eddie's Eddie's character was just so passionate, man. And he he, if he had to be a bad guy, he would turn into the most baddest bad guy. And if he had to be a good guy, he was uh, the greatest good guy ever. But I truly believe that because of that moment of having Dom around for a couple months and traveling with me and and doing angles in the ring, uh, shooting promos backstage, vignettes, I think that kind of sparked the the passion within Dom. And then we kind of drifted away. So I actually thought that Dom didn't want to be a part of this world until the day came where he asked me, Dad, I want to see if I can break in. But I think that was due to the connection he had with Eddie and myself. You know, so that that's how deep Eddie brings you into this world. Hey there, if you like the clip, make sure to subscribe or check out this recommended clip to my right.